is coming down from the gallows and I don't have very long. <laughs> All right, everyone. Wait, let me get the get things situated back here after that little introduction. Um, I think last week. Well, first of all, well, no, last week, somewhere during the um, the message boards here, or the I think it was on the, on the line app, we had some complaints about uh, my voice. So let's see if I can uh, change it up a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> All right, everyone, welcome to the Tonto's Demise Week 6 Recap. Is that what we're looking for? Do we want... Uh, I just, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. I think we should just stick with what works. Well, I mean, or we, at least what is normal. <laughs> um, uh, or maybe, I mean, if, if you want, I'll... I mean, I'm not, I will never <laughs> pro profess to be a singer, so, uh, if that's what, I mean, if that's what the, the people want, I mean, I can maybe figure out something for next week and work, uh, maybe practice a little bit, but, uh, I just think, I, I, I don't know what to, I, <laughs> I don't know, I have no idea what I'm saying, so, um, yeah, let's just Quit listening to me yammer on about stupid, um, absolutely nothing. So let's just get right into it. Uh, week six, we had a lot of interesting things going on, but let's get right into the first matchup, which was the defending champion Springfield Isotopes going up against FC Bahoric, a battle of the kitchen of love, fighting over the golden spatula who gets the rights to hold the golden spatula until next year, or at least until playoff time, if perchance we would happen to meet again. Uh, this this matchup actually, um, I have to give kudos to Justin because we, in the spirit of camaraderie, we I went over to his house and we actually watched. Uh, well, pretty much all of our guys were playing in the one o'clock game, one o'clock games, and uh, so I went over there and we actually. <laughs> I think we watched the NFL Red Zone channel for about three out three 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 and a half hours, <laughs> and watched pretty much all of everything happening in our matchups as they were happening, which was pretty fun for uh, fun for us, especially Justin. Seeing uh, we got to watch you know we got to watch Tom Brady throw two little touchdown passes to James White, which worked pretty good for him. But unfortunately, um, we also got to see Brandon Cook's 87-yard touchdown, um, Terrence West running a couple touchdowns, uh, what else did we see? Buffalo was doing okay, um, and we got to watch, uh, I think he was rooting for the Baltimore defense, but... Uh, <laughs> They, it looked like they were gonna come back and win the game. That was the problem. He was, you know, we were rooting. He was <laughs> rooting for Baltimore, but unfortunately, Terrence West scored the, the go-ahead touchdown. But then, so then he was happy. That he's gonna get the three points from Baltimore's defense, getting the win. And then you turn around, and <laughs> Odell Beckham Jr. catches a was it a seventy-yard touchdown pass to <laughs> get ahead, go ahead again. So Baltimore ended up losing that game, but um. Anyway, we had a good time. It was fun watching uninterrupted, said three hours of nonstop, no com commercial free football. Uh, that was pretty neat. Uh, so thank you to Justin for that. And then we took a, then we took a nice walk down Wimber and we went for burgers at the hotel. So it turned into a pretty nice day. <laughs> so when, you know, even in defeat, uh, Justin was humble. I was in the victory. I was humble as well. I think. So, uh, you know, there's no love lost. We <laughs> So, uh, it was a nice day, let me just say. Uh, but, 
Getting back down to it, the Springfield Isotopes won this matchup. Final score, 188.8 to 157.1. Quarterback matchups, we had Rivers versus Brady. And Brady, more than a little bit more than doubled up Rivers, 63 to 31. Uh, let's see. The wide receiver trios for the Isotopes, we had Jarvis Landry, Randall Cobb, and Brandon Cooks. Uh, let's see. Landry, 16. Cobb, 18. And Cooks, about 36 and a half. So, uh, let's see. 36 and 34 is, what, about 70? 70 points from the Isotopes wide receivers. Uh, FC Bohoric, he had Tavon Austin, Mike Wallace, and Deshaun Jackson. Looks like Austin had five and a half. Wallace, 13.7. And nine and a half, uh, Justin Dierk, nine and a half for Deshaun Jackson. So about almost 30, a little bit under 30 for the FC Bohoric. So that kind of balances back the... Um, Differential on the quarterbacks there. Uh, running backs, Isotopes had Garrett Blunt and Terrence West. Blunt had 50 yards and a touchdown. West, 87 yards and two touchdowns. So that was, what, 11 and 12 is 23, and 8 is about 31, 32. From the Isotopes running backs, as for FC Bohoric, he had C.J. Anderson with only 37 yards and Rashad Jennings with only 15 yards. So about <laughs> just over five points from your two running backs. Uh, tight ends, pretty even here. It was Pitta versus Clay. 9.6 for Pitta, 10.2 for Clay. Uh, flex positions, we had DeMarco Murray up against James White. Mentioned before, uh, James White had two receiving touchdowns. He actually had eight catches for 50 yards. And those two touchdowns, his total was 26.6. While DeMarco Murray had probably, I think, his quietest game of the year, surprisingly, at home against Cleveland, only 65 rushing yards and one touchdown, 12.5 points, I think his lowest output of the season so far. So kind of surprising against the Cleveland Browns, especially at home. But anyway, uh, kickers, we had Mason Crosby versus McManus. Crosby, a couple field goals and a PAT, 11 points for him. And McManus, two field goals, a PAT, uh, I think he had about seven. As for defenses, then we had Buffalo versus Baltimore. Buffalo was at home against San Francisco. They had, I think, one turnover, a couple sacks, did pretty good on yardage-wise. I think the total was, Yahoo says 12, I think it was like 21. And for Baltimore... They actually had three turnovers, did fairly well, but they gave up a lot of yards and points, and they actually did lose the game. So Yahoo says 13. I believe the total was actually 16, if I remember correctly. But it wasn't quite enough. Said so good, good, uh, good ma matchup for so good combo, I should say, for Tom Brady to James White. There you got almost 90 points from those two. But the rest of your team didn't do didn't do a whole lot. Um, so even though you know you doubled up on the quarterbacks there, uh, the Isotopes wide receiver core was able to able to balance that back out. And um, I think the running backs got a lot of touchdowns there. Uh, really pushed that one over back in favor of the Isotopes here. So uh, let's see. Both of these teams now they are. Uh, let's see, FC, he drops to 2-4. and four. He's actually now all the way down in 12th place, while the Isotopes move up to 2-4, and four, and they actually move up to 8th place. Not too great, but not too bad either. Uh, all right, who should we talk about next? Let's go to the Dub C Hooligans versus the new, I mean, <laughs> I should say the Wah, woe is me, Dubsy Hooligans, versus the New Gods, Mad Titans, and the woe is me, Dubsy, wins this one pretty handily. <laughs> the final score here, 194.75.
only 194 for Dub C. I mean, that's really that's another disappointing week for him, I would have to say, you know. But uh, I digress. New Gods Mad Titans, 147.05. <laughs> Speaking of more than doubling up your quarterbacks here, um, Dub C had Breeze versus Derek Carr for New Gods Mad Titans, who Carr only got you 33 points. Uh, Eli would have gotten you 65 on your bench. Um, actually, no, it would, because they had two long touchdowns, right? So it would have been more like 69 points. So a 35-point swing, uh, you still would have lost, Jimmy, if you had started, uh, Eli Manning in this matchup, so don't feel too bad about that. Uh, Breeze... With his long touchdown, he scored 78.25. So there's almost a, uh, over a 40-point advantage there out of the gate for Dub C Hooligans. Um, wide receivers, Dub C had Emmanuel Sanders, Jordan Matthews, and Terrence Williams. Sanders, 8. Matthews, 10.5. Williams, 11.5. So just about 30 points from your three wide receivers. New guys, Matt Titans, he had Alshon Jeffrey, Doug Baldwin, and Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, let's see, Jeffrey, 16, about 16 and a half. Doug Baldwin, a little over 7. And Fitzgerald, just under 11. So about 33, 34 points from your wide receivers. Running backs, Dub C had Lamar Miller and Eddie Lacy. Lamar Miller had 150 yards. He ran for a touchdown. He caught a touchdown. So you got about, what, 30 points from the from him. Eddie Lacy, 65 rushing yards. So a little over 40 points from your two running backs. As for New Gods Mad Titans, uh, he had Gordon and Washington from the Raiders. Uh, Gordon, 94 rushing yards. Washington, 50. But no touchdowns or anything from anybody there. So you got just under, you got about 14 points from those two. Uh, tight ends. We had Fleener versus Bennett. Fleener did pretty well. He had two touchdowns. One was receiving, one was a rushing touchdown because I think it was a lateral pass. Uh, he had 25.6, while Bennett had nine only 9.8. Uh Flex plays, <laughs> we had two Steelers going against each other, Le'Veon Bell versus Sammy Coates. Uh, as we know, Sammy Coates, zero points. Uh, New guys, Matt Titans, finally getting Le'Veon in the flex there, where he had six for 55 receiving and 50 yards rushing. No touch touchdowns or anything from him again this week, but uh, not a bad score, 18.8. Kickers, Gano versus Bryant. Looks like Gano had... One field goal and, I think, two PATs. And Bryant, one field goal and three PATs. So they're pretty much even there, around six points, maybe close to seven, depending on the fractions. Um, and then defenses, finally, we had a pretty good matchup here, at least on paper going into the night. Um, Philadelphia for New Gods and Arizona for Dub C. Uh, Philadelphia actually didn't do too well. Starting out there, but they came out of the gates uh, pretty slow against the, the uh, Redskins. But once they were down 14 to nothing, they got a kick return touchdown and they got a pick six, I believe. So they got you got two touchdowns from them. Uh, Yahoo says 18, even though they lost and gave up a lot of yards. I think it was pretty close to that. While Arizona, they. Uh, did pretty good, had a couple of turnovers, looks like one sack, but they only gave up three points, didn't give up too much yard, yard, blah, yardage, I should, I should say, and uh, Yahoo says 16, but I think it was closer to, um, actually might have been a little bit around 30, maybe 32, something like that, actually, so pretty good score from the Arizona Cardinals defense, which made this one pretty easily in favor of Dub C Hooligans. He moves up to 4-2. and two. He is in 4th place, while New Gods Mad Titans, he drops to 3-3, three and, three, and he is now in 6th place. 
All right, the next matchup we had the Golden Boy, Pony Boy, the Garbage Man, the Fry Cook, from Gags to Riches, up against Everybody Ertz. And the only one erting after this matchup was Everybody Ertz, as Gags to Riches extends his winning streak to four games from 0 and 2 to 4 and 2 this uh he gets the victory here the final score 188.9 to one only 110.45 pretty miserable performance from everybody Ertz unfortunately for Bigler um everybody Ertz had already been eliminated from the knockout pool let's get into the matchup here uh, going into Monday night, everybody Ertz was, <laughs> they were actually down about 130 points. <laughs> only, yeah, everybody Ertz only had 52 and a half points going into Monday night. But he did have his quarterback, Carson Palmer. He had Brandon Marshall, and he had, he also had the Carson Palmer to John Brown connection. Hoping for some big things there, but they did not pan out. All right, quarterbacks, gags to riches, Cam Newton, 60 points from him. Uh, pretty good game, as you probably know. Uh, I think Carolina was down 21 to nothing in the first quarter. So you pretty much knew it was going to be a fantasy feast for Cam <laughs> the rest of that game, even though they ended up losing. Uh, I think it, was, it did go to overtime, um, but he said he got 60 points. Carson Palmer, just about 37 and a half. Not too good there, so almost half of, uh, not quite half, well, a little bit more than half of what Cam Newton got for gags. Wide receivers, uh, let's see, well, Ertz, he had Crabtree, Brandon Marshall, and John Brown, as, as I said. Crabtree, only three, Marshall, only ten, and Brown, ten and a half. So, twenty-three and a half points from your wide receivers, almost, uh, <laughs> That total was almost equaled just by Julio Jones himself. He had 27 points. Uh, let's see, Demarius Thomas, 6.5. Antonio Brown, only about 8, a little under 8. So pretty quiet performance from those two guys, but made up for by Julio, getting you up to about a little over 40 points from your three receivers. Let's see, Gags to Riches at running back. He had Frank Gore and Gurley. Uh, Gore, he did go over 100 yards, but no touchdowns, so 13.6 from him. Gurley, looks like he only had 58 rushing yards, so you got about 18, 19 points from your two running backs. Uh, everybody hurts, as we know, his running back combo is Coleman and Freeman from the Atlanta Falcons. Unfortunately, most of their points have been coming from receiving stats, hoping you're really... Uh, hoping, hoping for touchdowns from those guys otherwise, but uh, wasn't to be here as Coleman, he only had 10 rushing yards, no touchdowns, and Freeman, 40 rushing yards, no touchdowns. So you only got five points combined from those two guys. Uh, tight ends, we had Jimmy Graham versus Kelsey. Graham, 15 points, Kelsey, 6. Flex plays, uh, here's where another... This definitely went, matchup went in the favor of Gags to Riches pretty easily. He had LaShawn McCoy, who had 140 rushing yards and three more touchdowns this week. 37.2 points from him. While in, uh, everybody Ertz had Mark Ingram, and even eight points from him. So almost a 30-point difference there. That's never a, never a good. And uh, let's see. Kickers, we had Hauschka versus Santos. Hauschka, a couple of field goals, a couple of PATs. And Santos, looks like he had one field goal and two PATs, but he missed one field goal, I think. He missed something. So he didn't get you too much there. They both got you about six or seven points. Defenses, we had Houston versus New England. Houston did win the game, had a couple turnovers, or maybe, uh, well, it looks like just one turnover, a couple sacks. But they did get the win, and but they did give up a lot of yards and points. So they, Yahoo says nine. It was probably a little bit more than that. 
As for New England, for Gags, he had they had two sacks and a safety, and they only gave up 17 points, and they got the win. Uh, Yahoo says 13, I want to say it was probably closer to 20, 21, somewhere in that ballpark. I can never quite remember, but it's usually fairly close uh, to what Yahoo says. It's usually, well, it's not always real close, but it's usually... If it's either, it's usually either right on or it's going to be about six or nine points more than what Yahoo usually says. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, all those differences were enough said to swing this one in favor of from gags to riches. Pretty not much from pretty much everybody on everybody Ertz. He was just lucky to get himself over one hundred this week, <laughs> but uh. Not the way Jay wanted to spend his birthday, I think, his birthday weekend, watching his team <laughs> go down to gags. Um, but I think, don't worry, Jay, because everybody <laughs> has been being de- been uh, being defeated by gags' team here in recent weeks. Uh, so he's put, um, <laughs> I, don't, I was almost going to say that he's put together a powerhouse, but... I think we all we all saw that and thought that last year, and then it didn't quite pan out. But I could I think you could argue that this year's team might be a little bit better than last year's. So um, we have to wait and see. <laughs> I said with Gags a score with one eighty eight point nine, he is four and two. He moves up to second place. While everybody hurts, he drops to three and three. He is in seventh place, and just real quick to finish what I was my thought that I was having there about from gags to riches. Uh, these last four weeks on his winning streak, he has scored two sixteen, one eighty nine, two ten, and one eighty eight. So <laughs> this was actually the lowest scoring week of his winning streak, and he had one hundred and eighty nine points. So setting the bar pretty high for future opponents, which I don't know about you, but I'm definitely uh, not looking forward to at the moment, but who knows, anything can happen. All right, uh, who's the next matchup? We have Huber Squashers up against the Mighty Midgets, the battle of Sally's husband versus Sally's could have been, uh, and the could have been takes this one Gets the advantage here. Maybe Sally must have been distracting Jim from uh, setting his proper lineup or something. Maybe his team. Uh, maybe with uh, I don't know what she did, but it favored the Huber Squashers and Detling here. The final score: Huber Squashers one fifty eight point one five to the Mighty Midgets one forty point one. So not too much of a difference here in final scores, but uh. Just a couple of quiet performances from Mighty Midgets players. A little bit, probably hoping for a little bit more from them could have changed the outcome of this matchup. But anyway, quarterbacks we had Aaron Rodgers versus Kirk Cousins. Uh, Rodgers actually won this one by almost ten points. Kirk Cousins thirty-seven to Aaron Rodgers forty-five and a half. Wide receivers Huber Squasher had Amari Cooper, Jordy Nelson and Willie Sneed. Uh, Cooper had 10 for 130, just well, just under 130. Nelson looks like he had his touchdown streak snapped. Instead of scoring a touchdown, he lost a fumble this week. Uh, he was just under 10, while Sneed was about 8.5. So you got, let's see, I'd say just under 40 points from your three wide receivers. While Mighty Midgets, uh, not too much from his guys. Butler, Bryce Butler from Washington, uh, Allen Robinson, who's been having a really surprisingly quiet year so far, um, and Jamison Crowder. Said Butler, he did catch a touchdown, but that was his only catch, a 20-yarder. Robinson only had three for 50, and Crowder, he only caught three passes, but one of them was a touchdown. He got you 13.3. So it looks like you got just about 30 points from your wide receivers. So that pretty much makes this contest an even match here after your quarterbacks and wide receivers. 
Then we go to running backs. Uh, Huber Squashers had Jonathan Stewart and Jamal Charles. Char- uh, let's see, Stewart, 85 rushing yards. Charles, 33 rushing yards. Uh, but Stewart did have two touchdowns, and Charles had one. So that definitely swings it in the favor of Huber Squashers here. Uh, let's see. Those three touchdowns and the rushing yards got you about, what, 18 and 11 is 29, 30. So about 30 points from your running backs. Wow. Mighty Midgets had Forte and Carlos Hyde. Forte, only 20 yards, and Hyde, only 50. No touchdowns or anything. So only 7 points there from your wide from your running backs. Tight ends, we had Greg Olson versus Delaney Walker. Walker only had one catch for 20 yards. And Olsen, 6 for 94. 15 and a half points from him. Uh, flex plays. We had Chris Hogan versus David Johnson. David Johnson, over 100 yards again. And three more, three more touchdowns for him this week. He had almost 38 points. While Hogan only caught one pass for 39 yards. So he was at 4.9. And Johnson, 37.8. Kickers, we had Tucker versus Sturgis. Uh, let's see, it looks like Tucker made a couple field goals, a couple PATs, and so did Sturgis. But uh, looks like Tucker had three, three field goals, while Sturgis only had two. Made a difference there. Looks like it was about 10 to 7 on Yahoo. So it was probably closer to like 11 to 9, 11 to 8, something like that. You, you usually you add one. I mean, based on the uh, yardage of the field goals, it usually ends up adding on like a half between a half and a one and a half points to your kicker score. But uh, then defenses, we had Tennessee for Huber Squashers and Carolina Panthers for the Mighty Midgets. Gotta say, the Carolina Panthers defense might be one of the team, one of the. Uh, Parts of this lineup drag, dragging down Mighty Midgets so far this year. Um, as we know, Carolina, they ended up losing the game, but they, and you know, they, I, when you know uh, Drew Brees scored 78 points, things weren't going too good for them. Um, they did have one turnover and one sack, but I said yardage all over the place. Yahoo says four. Um, I think they actually didn't give up a whole lot of rushing yards, so you might have gotten a little bit more than four there. From Carolina's defense might have been a little, just a little bit more, if not four. I can't remember. But Tennessee's defense, they had six sacks. Doesn't look like any turnovers, but they did give up a lot of points and yards. Um, Yahoo says nine. I think it was... Actually, I don't think they gave up a lot of rushing yards. But I think Yahoo says nine. I think it was a closer to like 15. Maybe 15 or 18, something like that. I um, can't remember. But... And, but anyway, uh, even the said good scores from Aaron Rodgers and David Johnson was not enough to get a win this week for Mighty Midgets. Uh, like I said, kind of dis- disappointing performances from the rest of his team. Um, Butler, Robinson, Crowder, Forte, Hyde, Walker, really not too much from them. Only one of those guys got you into double digits thanks to his touchdown. <laughs> Uh, even Butler couldn't get you double digits, <laughs> even though he did score a touchdown. But um, even though it wasn't the greatest week here from Huber Squashers, he got some consistent scores up and down his lineup. A um, couple, you know, couple touchdowns from his running backs. That was enough to get this, get the, get the win here. And let's see, with the win, Huber Squashers, he moves up. He's now four and two, and he is in third place. Well, Mighty Midgets, they dropped to 3-3, three and three, and he is, now, he is now in 5th place. The next matchup, we had Possum Magic trying to hold on to 1st place, going up against Disco. And Possum Magic gets the victory here. Uh, let's see, final score, 182.35 to 141.2. Uh, let's see. I believe, according to Yahoo, Possum Magic is now riding a four-game winning streak, as well as Gags. So, trying to keep pace here, keep ahead, keep one step ahead. The Possum trying to keep one step ahead of the 
freight train that is from gags to riches. <laughs> Stay off the tracks, uh, Possum Magic. Uh, let's see, quarterbacks. Possum had Ben Roethlisberger, who, as we know, got injured and had a miserable game here. Although he did come back th at, towards the end of the game. Um, got to say, uh, since we do have the one-game quarterback rule, lucky for Treesize, he did get added onto his score, the whatever Landry Jones did. Um, yeah, unfortunately for you, Landry Jones, the only statistic that he put up was a, <laughs> just before halftime, he uh, took a knee and lost you one rushing yard. So you actually lost point .1 <laughs> on, off your score from, thanks to Landry Jones. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, you ended up with just over 28 from your quarterback, Roethlisberger, while Disco, he got just under 46 from his quarterback, Andrew Luck. Uh, let's see. The wide receiver trios, we had Possum Magic with A.J. Green, Cole Beasley, and Kenny Britt. Not a very scary group other than A.J. Green, I'd have to say. Looking at it on paper, at least going into <laughs> going into sun going into Sunday, I mean, you probably felt fairly confident with Hopkins, Thomas, and Benjamin, but uh, maybe not totally confident, but uh, felt like you had a chance here. But uh, <laughs> Cole Beasley, two touchdowns. Kenny Britt uh, plucked off the waiver wire and put into the <laughs> starting lineup this week. 130 yards and two <laughs> touchdowns. Uh, and, even though uh, it was a quiet week from AJ Green, again, somehow Possum Magic's roster <laughs> balances out that he gets big games from from random people when the weeks that his superstars do poorly. Uh, <laughs> so let's see: AJ Green, fifteen points; Beasley, just under twenty-four; and Britt, thirty-two and a half. Jeez. <laughs> So what, 55, almost almost a little over 70 points from those three guys, Green, Beasley, and Britt. You would think that most of it, most of that 70, at least half of that 70 would have come from A.J. Green. But you would be wrong. It was, it was Kenny Britt. Uh, let's see. As for Disco's wide receivers, he had Hopkins, Michael Thomas, and Travis Benjamin. Hopkins... 16 points. Thomas, uh, just under 19. He did have a touchdown catch. While Benjamin, he looks like he only got you about 3 points. Maybe less than that because he was responsible for a lost fumble. So you ended up with about 35 points from your two wide, your three wide receivers, which was about half of <laughs> what... Possum Magic's wide receivers got him. So even though there was about a 20-point difference in quarterbacks, there was a 35-point difference in wide receivers. So that swings it back in favor of Possum Magic. Um, then we get to the running backs. Uh, Possum had Crowell and Christian Michael. Crowell only had 16 yards. Uh, Michael, only 64 yards, but he did get two touchdowns as well. So that got you about 20 points from your two running backs. While as for, uh, let's see, Disco, 157 rushing yards from Ezekiel Elliott. Unfortunately, no touchdowns or anything, so he got you 18.7. While your other running back was TJ Yeldon, uh, only 20 yards from him. So looks like you got about 18, 19, 20 points from your two running backs. So pretty even there. Mostly thanks to, let's see, uh, Christian Michael and Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott's large uh, yardage total balanced out by Christian Michael's two touchdowns there. So Then tight ends, we had Hunter Henry from Thursday night. He had he was one of the only bright spots from from that game, fantasy wise. Um, he had six for eighty three and a touchdown, a little over twenty points from him. While Disco was forced to start Richard Rogers, 
I think he had Kyle Rudolph on a bye, so and Eric Ebron not doing anything, or I think he might be injured. Um, Rogers only three and a half points, so a big difference there in favor of Possum. Flex plays, we had Sproles versus Alan Hearns. Sproles, pretty quiet game, only one catch for him at 20 yards rushing. Just under three and a half points, while Hearns had just under 12 and a half. Kickers, uh, the other only bright spot from the Thursday night game, fantasy-wise, was Lambo from San Diego, as he kicked a bunch of field goals. One PAT, Yahoo says 12, I think it was closer to 13 and a half, something like that. And as for Disco, he's got uh, Catanzaro, and he only made, well, only, <laughs> he made four PATs, but no field goals, unfortunately for you. Uh, defenses, Possum Magic did not have his Minnesota Vikings defense, but it was no problem here as he plugged in the Washington Redskins defense, who did surprisingly well against uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. They did get five sacks, gave up... Uh, they gave up a lot of yards, I think, but they did get the win. Yahoo says 11. It might have been, it was probably a little bit more than that. But Disco had the Denver D. Uh, looked like they were going to be pretty good here, but uh, wasn't quite their week here against uh, San Diego, as we know on Thursday night. But they did have a couple, they had a couple turnovers, a couple sacks. They did okay. Um, they did lose the game, but I think they did pretty good yardage wise. So Yahoo says 14, I think it might have been closer to um, maybe 17, 20, something like that. But not, not a bad score, even though they did lose. But uh, so there's a couple big scores from Beasley, Britt, and Michael. Six, touch, six combined touchdowns from them, um, even though Roethlisberger had no touchdowns. Henry also had a touchdown, so he got a bunch of touchdowns from his guys. Uh, did pretty well uh, up and down. You know, when you get we're getting twenty and thirty points from a couple of guys, you're gonna probably get probably gonna do pretty well. Uh, just wasn't quite enough from a handful of players on Disco's team. Benjamin, I'm looking at you, uh, Travis Benjamin, Richard Rogers, T.J. Yeldon, uh, Catanzaro, even Hearns. You'd like to I don't you'd like to see a little bit more from the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars passing game here so far this year. Kind of surprising that they haven't been as good as expected, but um, it is Jacksonville. So uh, Anyway, with that victory, Possum Magic does hold on to first place. He moves up to 5-1. and one. He's in the driver's seat for a playoff spot, I think, already, barring a uh, complete disaster. Although, as we know, Ben Roethlisberger is going to be out for a couple of weeks. So we'll have to wait and see what Possum Magic is able to pull out of his hat here this next couple weeks. While Disco, he drops to 2-4, and four, joining the 2-4 and four club, along with several other teams. And he is in 10th place. And our final matchup was the Detonators going up against Twerkin Bullcuts. And Twerkin, with his newly acquired Odell Beckham Jr., is actually the difference maker in this matchup, as the final score ended up in favor of Twerkin Bullcuts. He had 167.15 to the Detonators 161.9. So that six-point margin of victory was actually decided thanks to Odell Beckham Jr. having a plus six from two long touchdowns. So those bonus points, uh, well... He just quite he just missed having the extra bonus points too from having uh, the wide receiver gets his second bonus at 225 yards and he just missed that with only 222 but it was enough to get the win and that's all that matters for twerking here uh, let's take a look down up and down the lineup uh, we had twerking with Bortles versus Matthew Stafford Stafford actually got about 20 more points. Uh, let's see, Stafford 53.9 to 32.5 for Bortles. Three wide receivers. Let's see, detonators. He had T.Y. Hilton, Kelvin Benjamin, and his newly acquired Marvin Jones Jr. 
Uh, Hilton, 8 points. Benjamin, 16.5. Jones, 9 points. So, what about that's 16 and 16? 32, 33 points from your three wide receivers. Uh, <laughs> defeated just by himself there from Odell Beckham Jr. With his two long touchdown bonuses, he actually ended up just under 50 points this week. While Edelman, only 7 points. And Macklin, only 8 points. So, <laughs> you got about... that. Bumps you up to almost 65 points from your three wide receivers. Uh, let's see, running backs we had for Twerkin, Spencer Ware and Fozzie Whitaker. Luckily for Twerkin, <laughs> he had 130, let's see, Spencer Ware had 130 yards and a touchdown. So 22 points there. And Fozzie Whitaker actually got you negative points because his rushing stat was minus one yard. So he actually dragged you down a little bit there. Um, looking at the detonators, two running backs, he had, what's his name? Uh, Howard from, Jordan Howard from Chicago Bears, and Ryan Matthews. Uh, let's see. Howard, only 34 rushing yards. Matthews, 60. But Howard did score a touchdown. So that got you about 15 points there from your two running backs. Uh, tight ends, no contest here. Gronk versus versus um, Zach Miller. I think Gronk had his highest receiving yards total of his career, if I remember correctly, as did, well, as did Odell, Odell Beckham Jr. in this matchup. Uh, Gronk had 162 yards on seven catches and a touchdown, 32.2 points from him, while Zach Miller was only at 9.5. Justin Dierk, 9.5. And flex players, we had Meredith from the Bears, another bear going here for the detonators. <laughs> and well, it was a battle of bears, I guess I should say, because Meredith was going up against Eddie Royal. And Meredith took this one down pretty easily. Uh, he had 11 for 113, while Royal only, only had 4 for 54. So 22.3 to 9.4 there. Kickers, Janikowski, one field goal, one PAT. It looks like he missed a field goal too, so wipe out that PAT. Uh, Vinatieri, looks like he had a handful of field goals and a couple PATs. Yahoo says 12. I think it was closer to like 14 actually. And defenses, detonators. Uh, I don't know if this was quite the matchup breaker here, but he did have... Three, he does have three defenses in, on his roster, and he went with Pittsburgh over Los Angeles and Detroit, who happened to be facing each other this week. Not sure if one of those would have actually gotten you the win or not, because they, they both gave up a ton of yardage as well. But the Steelers, they only had a blocked kick, and they lost the game. Um, I think they actually didn't do... I think they got... Yeah, he says three. I mean, might have been like six, something like that, but um, it was pretty poor. And Twerkin had Jacksonville, who had one sack but didn't give up too many yards, and they won the game. So not a lot of points either. Yahoo says seven. I think it was closer to maybe 10 or 13, somewhere in that ballpark. But it was just enough, thanks to Beckham Jr. and his bonus points, his long touchdowns. <laughs> Even though you know the big game from Stafford, good game from Gronk, uh, good one from Meredith, those three guys, wasn't enough to get you past uh, Odell Beckham Jr. and Spencer Ware for this matchup. Uh, Twerkin he moves up to two and four, while Detonators drop to two and four. And let's see, Detonators, you are now in ninth place, and Twerkin you are in eleventh place. All right, I think that pretty much sums up week six for Tonto's Demise. Uh, it was another good week. Pretty good matchups here. Um, let's see, anything? I don't think there were two... There were really the only significant injury that I can think of is for Possum Magic with Ben Roethlisberger going down. Uh, could be a tricky couple of weeks for you here till he comes back. I'll have to wait and see how that plays out for you. If you pick up a quarterback off the waiver wire 
which could be a little bit tricky for you since you're number 12 in waiver priority right now, but um, and you've also already used up 10 of your moves. I don't know if you want to keep using moves up here this early in the season. Uh, we still have a long ways to go, so we're only getting to the halfway point of the season, the regular season at least. Um, so only being already into double digits on your moves isn't uh, is a little uh, risky, but anyway, uh, <laughs> you can always make a trade. Uh, and which, speaking of trades, we had a quarterback trade actually go down a little bit earlier t this evening, which was uh, Tom Brady went from FC Bohoric to Twerken, and FC Bohoric got in, ex in exchange Odell Beckham Jr. So a quarterback for wide receiver swap, which really. Um, was win-win for both teams, I think, because, um, as we know, FC Bohoric, he had two definitely startable wide receiver or uh, quarterbacks, I should say, uh, with Brady and Matt Ryan, uh, who Matt Ryan, obviously, uh, he obviously passed the test going up against um, the P Panthers defense and the Seahawks defense these past few weeks and has been doing pretty well, so it's hard to... <laughs> Envisioned him being stopped by practically anybody, uh, unless just himself, I think, is the only uh, person who can stop him so far this year. But uh, even though uh, FC Bohoric had actually been using Tom Brady since he came back, he's been doing great as well, uh, which was probably, you could say, Twerkin's weak spot. He wasn't getting good production from Bortles. I mean, this is an immediate upgrade for him. As for FC Bohoric, it's an immediate upgrade for him because his weak spot was wide receiver. And now he's got one of the best ones in the game to uh, really solidify his wide receiver trio each week. So, uh, yeah, there's really uh, no loss from either team. Like I said, um, yeah, losing a good wide receiver for Twerkin, but he did have, he has a, uh, he had a, a surplus of wide receivers, I think, to begin with anyway. So losing Beckham wasn't a huge blow to his team. He's still got a handful of guys startable every week. He's got Edelman. He's got Macklin. He's now got, like I said, Brady to, Brady to Edelman. Uh, he's got Macklin. He's got Diggs. He's got um, a couple guys down on the bench here. Let's see. Royal, Cruz, and Stills. Looks like I think Vincent Jackson is on his bench still. He's going to be gone. So that doesn't help you. But, I mean, it's a solid wide receiver trio. Edelman, Macklin, Diggs going forward here. So we'll see what happens. Now you've upgraded your quarterback. Looks like you uh, might be much more competitive here going forward, as will FC Bohoric, I think, upgrading, again, his wide receiver trio. So a win-win for both teams on this uh, trade. Uh, anything else I should mention? I believe we say goodbye to Disco this week from the knockout pool. Uh, six teams down, six to go. So it's getting harder and harder each week to stay alive in the knockout pool. Thanks to the less teams there are, the higher you have to score to stay and stay alive here. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, let's see. This week should be pretty interesting because as we as you probably know already um, we have eight teams three two-thirds of the league is either three and three or two and four so only one game there's really only two there's two there's only two games separating second place from 12th place right now so and we actually have a really interesting matchup week because however unlikely <laughs> that the chips fall into place here, but we could, which I really find interesting, <laughs> we could potentially have, I think, what, eight teams all go to potentially three and four? We could have almost the entire league <laughs> having the same record because, let's see, we've got Topes. Oh, who are the, let's, let's see, who are the possible teams that could end up Three and four after this week. Isotopes, Titans, Twerkin, that's three. Ertz and Detonators, 
could both be. That's four or five. Um, disco could be. That's six. So could FC and Mighty Midgets. <laughs> so that's seven, eight. Yeah. So we could have eight. We could potentially have eight teams all at three and four. It would require the Isotopes to defeat Possum, uh, Twerken to defeat New Gods Mad Titans, and it would re have the Detonators beating Everybody Ertz, uh, Disco beating Dub C, and FC Bahuric defeating the Mighty Midgets. So, um, all those matchups are actually going to be pretty good, I think, at least from the looks of it. So, uh, it actually it, it could happen. One team is definitely guaranteed to um, get a fifth win between the Huber Squashers and from Gags to Riches, because those two guys are going up against each other, which could, which would as I said, it would the Isotopes would be required to defeat Possum Magic to get to three and four this week, and if he lost, that would put him in a tie for first place with either the winner of. Gags to Riches, and the Heber Squashers. So, a lot of interesting matchups could uh, could play themselves out here this weekend. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I mean, if you're already 2-4, and four, obviously you want to avoid dropping to 2-5 and five because that's a pretty deep hole to try and get out of, especially when you're already at 5, and as we know, the magic number is 7. And, well, I mean, the way the standings are shaping out this year, who knows? You, we could have a, <laughs> we could potentially have a 6-7 and seven team maybe squeak into that last playoff spot. You never know. But um, either way, you definitely don't want to be at five losses this uh, early into the season here. So good luck to all those teams who are fighting to climb back up. And uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. We'll let the podcasters get into the actual preview and diagnosis of these matchups here. But like I said, uh, really looking forward to this week. <laughs> Just I actually, uh, part of me is definitely really crossing my fingers and hoping that all of those three and four potent those potential three and fours actually do pan out because they would just I would just find it very interesting to, to have eight all eight teams the two thirds of the league all having the same record at this point in the season which would just I uh, I don't think it's ever happened before it would be unprecedented in the history of Tonto's demise I just like being able to say something like unprecedented in the history of Tonto's demise so uh. Uh, yeah, it's going to be another good week. So looking forward to everybody. And um, all right, that's it, I think. So good luck to everyone, and we'll see you back here again uh, next week for this Week 7 uh, review. All right, everybody, good luck, and again, see you next week.